three, two, one. Welcome to something like that. Hey, it's me, Nav. And uh, if you could, if you think that I'm going to tell you what episode is this, what number what? Well, I gave up that idea because every single time I just switch on the microphone and decide to tell you that this is episode one, two, three, or four, I kind of lose track. I completely forget the numbers because I'm really, really lousy when it comes to numbers. But what I can tell you is uh, I got some fun stuff coming up for you. As a matter of fact, everybody who comes on the show is uh, it plays a very important role in the music and arts and also entertainment industry. And today, uh, here's, I, got, I have somebody that actually plays a very important role in our daily lives. As a matter of fact, when the moment that you... Uh, how do I put this? Whenever you see two turntables, okay, two turntables and one headphone, you always go with one hand on this on the, the record player and one hands on the ears and trying to do that wiki wiki sound, but you have no idea what's that all about. So I decided to get the man himself, the man who knows everything. I could call him the master of scratching, the Sifu, well, whatever titles you want to name it, you can have it over there. Uh, he has been uh, uh, featuring, uh, he has been featured in many of the local tracks we have down here. Uh, he's dropped his scratch, he's composed uh, several great music. And also, he has been here, traveling here, traveling there. And today, he has traveled on our show, something like that with Nav, as the one, the only, the undisputed champ of the world. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, DJ Lethal Skills. What's up, brother? Yo, salute. Woo, woo. Salute, man. <laughs> looking good. You're looking you. good. And as always, I, I believe you're back to that health regime right now. Back to the parks and gym. I'm trying. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, COVID-19 was tough uh, sitting at home. And especially when you have a wife who cooks amazing food all the time. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. That's the thing, because whenever I see pictures of your wifey posting food, whatever's up there for the menu, especially during uh, the fasting month, I was like, how the hell does he keep up with that, man? There's no way, no amount of gym, no amount of walks in the parks can actually overcome that. Totally. My belly is a witness. My yeah, belly is a witness. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of like doing streamings like such because uh, this way you only see this part of the face, the whole body. It doesn't I show like the lower part and so on. So I kind of enjoy doing that, man. Sir, so, maybe how's in it six did, months' man? time, uh, all is good. In six months' time, we can do a full body uh, live stream. Hopefully, yeah. I don't know. Maybe for you, but for me, I'm not too sure about that. I got to start doing some workouts myself, man. So, sir, you. COVID-19 has pretty messed up everybody's lives at the moment. But then again, we'll talk about that in a bit from now. The thing is, uh, one of the most important things that happened recently was I was having chats with a couple of people, uh, people from the hip-hop industry. I was having chats with people from the rock industry, music production, and so on. And uh, one of the things that caught my attention, as a matter of fact, I did have a chat with a DJ a couple of uh, weeks back. and uh, But the thing is, we didn't touch on was the most crucial or rather the most interesting part about DJing which is the art of scratching which you don't really find much of it going on right now thing coming up with live streams and so on but you rarely see the art of scratching is it is it still relevant is it like a big thing going on right now skills um well you know with times as a change even hip-hop with time is changing you know uh, there's always like evolution of sounds of any music general um hip hop back in the old school uh area of hip hop it used to, scratching used to be much more involved in the, in music production and music composition but you still hear scratching uh when you listen to some new uh boom bap style of uh, or old school hip hop tracks uh, with the new trap and drill and all these kind of new wavy uh hip hop rap music coming up they don't kind of incorporate this art much it's not to I don't know why, you know, it just doesn't fit with the formula, I think, or maybe but, not. But the thing people. is, when it comes to hip hop, everybody knows that scratching is an important part of the entire hip hop track itself. It's like um, if you look at the history of it way, way back then, it's like it was the DJs that actually promoted the hip hop. And then you had an MC coming along in between. Now it's like kind of the other way around, right? Totally. Uh, just to break it down. In, Turntablism, which is the art of the turntable or the scratching, which is one of the things you can do. Uh, turntablism is like a, when you learn an instrument, it's like when you buy a guitar. So there, you have the DJ and you have the turntablist. The DJ is the one who blends the music, who selects the bangers and fits the mood and make the people, uh, you know, uh, dance and whatever the, the event is. But the turntablist is like a musician using the DJ equipment to create music and manipulate the sound live uh, to what's happening, expresses emotions or take a piece of a sound 
or a portion of a drum and play drum while he's cutting it in his hands. Uh, so it's a live sound manipulation. So it's beyond just scratching. It's like you're playing an instrument. So that oh, yeah, you, cool, you, yeah, you flip the turntable to an instrument. You can put a guitar sample, cut it as a guitar. You can play drums. You can uh, use words. You can put na 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 na, you know. Uh, you know, you can do the. Now, I've, I've, I've seen you do that a couple of times, and I'm still, I'm still in the uh, amazed. Um, I don't know what's the word for it. Amazed uh, situation. Or I'm still mesmerized by whenever I see you uh, do your scratches. But when did it start for you? I mean, when did you actually get into the uh, art of turn turn tableism or scratching, man? For you, okay. I, I'm guessing it's a very long time ago. Yeah, actually, uh, the first time I saw uh, scratching. Um, I was watching MTV back in, uh, I'm from Lebanon, by the way, for those who don't know, Beirut. And uh, back in mid eighties, we used to have MTV when it just first started on TV, you know, it used to come broadcast. And I remember I saw Herbie Hancock, uh, the song called Rocket. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah, I did. And then towards the end of the video, uh, because back then I used to break dance. I used to watch breaking and, and all these like break dance movies. Okay. Uh, so by watching Rocket towards the end of the video, there's a part where Gran Messitilor comes scratching, fit, fit, fresh, fit, fit, fresh. He kind of do like a solo with the drummer, and then the b-boys come out of the closet. It's like a very moment in the in the, in the video music video. And uh, at that time, I remember Gran Messitilor is wearing a, I'm talking 85, 86, white leather wow. jacket with a headphone with the antenna coming out like this. There's like things moving from his jacket, <laughs> looking with the shades, like looking so cool. And he's on top of these two things and he's going, f -f 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 he's moving his hand and the sound coming up fresh. And and that moment for me is the moment that kind of like uh, spark, that was the spark. Uh, I, I was very interested. I'm like, this is what I want to do. This is so cool. Like, you know, take song and cut it up and, and, and create something and jam it, you know? So... That was it, Herbie Hancock, Rocket, 1986. That was the moment I was exposed for the first time to scratch somebody scratching and uh, made me want to become a DJ and get into the scratching culture, Twin Tables and Culture, and the whole shebang that followed. Well, if we're talking about from 1985, this is a very, very long time. I mean, to get, have that interest going on. And that was the era, basically, that DJs were looked as gods i would say that people especially if you can do your your scratching and whatever not it's it's like a very big thing back then but of course when you get into the djing line it's not just about uh, uh scratching you have to learn about mixing and the music and so on and you said you you're from you started off at in lebanon right so sure. the music culture how was it like for the music culture the hip-hop scene back there uh, yeah, when I was a kid, like, you know, my uh, musical inspiration came from my family. Uh, at home, we always used to have uh, vinyls and mm -hmm. a record player. And my father, when I was a kid, I can't even walk. He told me, like, get the favorites, like local musicians, old school artists. Get this record and put it on. I used to, you know, walk on my hands with my diapers, go pull the record, put it, and then touch the thing. <laughs> and he's like, be careful. And then, like, I'm putting the needle on the record and don't make, you know. He starts screaming at me, like, don't scratch the record. You know, and then when I grew up, I'm well, like, okay, now I'm going to scratch all the records and I'm going <laughs> to make it my career. Just scratching all the records. Yeah. Oh, man. So, so I come from a musical. My dad plays the instrument and uh, he has a big record collection. Uh, he used to dub videos and uh, I used to have access to uh, DJ battles and the MC battles through VHS cassette that he used to bring uh, through the video library that he used to have one of his things that he used to do. Uh, so I was blessed to be raised in a family that is uh, into art and uh, through my father business I had access to seeing these things as a young kid growing up and then it kind of like you know uh, inspired me to become eventually DJ Lethal Skills. Your major break, I mean, of course, as for you, uh, I know you personally, and I, of course, I know your whole entire portfolio and so on, and you had several major gigs, but for you, would, which one would you consider, consider your major breakthrough? The ones that really created that identity of DJ Little Skills, put you on the map. Which one is it, man? Like, to be honest, uh, since I started my music career, since I was a kid, I never got into the art uh, for reason to try to prove anything to anyone uh, I, when i was born there was a civil war happening in lebanon uh, okay it was the beginning spark of the civil war so when i was born i was born in the shelter of the hospital because there was israel was bombing our country 
and my mom wanted to deliver. So my father was driving, and then we went to the hospital. They didn't want to open. My father came back out with the AK. Open the hospital. <laughs> movie, movie, I'm telling you. Wow, man. Like, this is how I came to this earth. And like, you know, under threat, they opened the hospital, and then we were running down to the shelter underground. We have to go down because there's Israeli airplanes bombing, bombing the city. Uh, and as, as I was dribbling down, I, I got delivered on the stairs. So I was not the born the classical way on the bed. The doctor hold you, spank you on the butt, and you say, wah, the first scream to life. I was born with bombs. So growing you up- You came kid, in with a bang, man. I'm always dropping bombs, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> so music was my escape from the sounds of war. Mainly, this is why I used to always work a Walkman. And I used to have a huge cassette archives from uh, you know uh, Michael Jackson to uh, Sir Mix a Lot to Black Sheep to Wu Tang to you know I'm always rocking music and uh, so I don't hear the bombs and I don't hear the bullets and the war happening uh, outside and I was blessed to travel as a kid growing up so I got mixed up with different cultures uh, you know in Lebanon we speak French uh, we were colonized by French people a long time back so most of the people speak French English and Arabic so growing up I was very inspired by French rap and French rap is huge. When it comes to DJs within the French bands, scratching and uh, the beatbox and the whole thing. But when I was a kid, there was no hip hop scene in Lebanon. The only access to hip hop used to come from abroad through MTV or people who traveled abroad and bring cassettes there and stuff. And this, if you fast forward until the early, 90, uh, early 90s, this is where I started, uh, got into production and I started doing hip hop. Uh, we started imitating French rap. And American hip hop, and then eventually, after four or five years, we started doing Arabic hip hop. Lebanon is considered one of the first countries in the Middle East region uh, to start the Arabic to Arabize hip hop culture in all its forms, whether the graffiti, Arabic calligraphy, uh, the scratching. I used to scratch Arabic samples from old uh, uh, artists, like you have here, Piramli, and all these like old school, like seventies, uh, sort of, like you know, classical Malaysian music. Okay. So I used to do that in an Arabic format. And we used to take old school music, sample it, put it on my MPC and chop it with some hip hop drums and do Arabic hip hop, which later followed by the rappers started writing in Arabic and tackling issues that we are going through. So we started by imitating the West and eventually we made it our own. And Lebanon was one of the, I was blessed to be around one of the founders of uh, Arabic rap in the world from wow. early nineties, uh, moving on. So we started the, the hip hop in the region. Because I'm going to be completely honest with you. Uh, like I said, the uh, hip hop scene about Lebanon, I've discovered it a lot through you. When we first met, you, you told me among how big the scene was. Because you know how screwed up some of the mainstream media is. Uh, they only focus on the tragedy that's going on down there, but hardly you hear much about the uh, scene, the music scene. Could just tell me a little bit more about the hip hop scene itself. I mean, it's not like it's not like everybody is like on having most of the bad times there's also good times and you told me once no one cares anymore you just want to live our life in a good way right so just could you just elaborate a little bit more on that part um lebanon in the region beyond hip-hop as a as a country is very known in its nightlife and hospitality uh we have the most clubs in one country in the middle east uh, we don't we party over the weekend uh, clubs open non-stop we continue partying at the beach like lebanese people love to party uh, before the civil war, Lebanon used to be called the Pearl of the Middle East, the Paris of the Middle East, uh, in a way. So Lebanon has always been known for having some top uh, electronic DJs, uh, huge clubs like DO18. It was used to be an old graveyard underground that it opens like a telescope. And I mean, we have some amazing, uh, the country is corrupt with the politics. And <laughs> we still like suffer. Most of the world? Yeah, but it's a lot of it's extreme. It's like cancer is corruption. Like, you know, uh, other places in the world, they're blessed. As much as they think the government is corrupt, corruption is bad, no matter how big or small it is. But I'm seeing yeah. in that part of the world, it's really like a mafia ruling in a, in a suit. <laughs> it's a mafia dude in a suit ruling a country. Like, you know, uh, mobs. They're doing it so, in style, man. They're doing it in style. Yeah, so music was always in Lebanon something huge. So the nightlife in Lebanon is big, not just hip hop. I mean, you know, uh, if you just, uh, I always said I want to take you there. Hopefully one day we'll travel to Lebanon and you will get to experience it, you know? So, but usually when it back to hip hop, because this is where I'm, I'm uh, mostly do. Uh, when I first started doing hip hop in Lebanon, mostly we used to express our surrounding. So it's very socio-political 
uh, context that we talk about. We express about what we're going through, the struggle, the no opportunities, the wars, the sectarian wars, the religious wars in the region, uh, the corrupt governments, no opportunities for the youth. So our hip hop is very, when we first started, was very angry and very political, you know? Uh, but as we moved on and we did so much stuff and whatnot, uh, hip hop started branching. So we have people who rap in Arabic, people who rap in English, people who rap in French, people who flip it, people who talk about personal issues, what they go through as youth growing up, uh, social issues. And they have people who talk about, just want to forget what's going on and talk about partying and just kicking back and uh, having fun. And so it's, di it's diverse. But mainly when it started, it was very political. It was for a statement, it was for a scream, it was to unite the whole part of the country together and uh, yeah, it was for a cause. The, the cause to make hip hop was much more stronger than doing it nowadays. Nowadays, most of the hip hop is being done mostly for, I don't know, social status, likes, impressions or something, uh, or maybe just entertainment, or maybe some people going through a phase, hip hop is cool, let me do hip hop now. And then, you know, I'm one of the few in my crew as a kid growing up who all my life I've been hip hop. And now I'm 40 plus and I'm still hip hop. And I think even when I move from this realm, I'm still gonna be rocking hip hop always, you know. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's already in the blood. It's more of a lifestyle than uh, the, the glam. It's more of a lifestyle. The hip hop culture itself uh, says a lot because it depends on how you look at it. Because some people just like what you just mentioned ago. It's just music. It's just for the style. It's just for the entertainment. But uh, the culture of hip hop itself is huge. It's really, really huge. It doesn't matter if you're a DJ, or a rapper, or a graffiti artist, a beat a beat maker, or whatever. But uh, Hip hop is a very interesting lifestyle indeed. But you have traveled around the world and uh, you have some connections with Red Bull. I believe you had some competitions. Uh, you participated in some competitions and you actually won them, right? Uh, yeah, which one was this? Uh, actually, when I started uh, my DJ career, when I first started as a DJ, I was never a club DJ. I was more of a hip hop DJ who plays underground hip hop and uh, go to scratch battles like uh, the MC and ITF and uh, some Middle Eastern uh, DJ battles. Uh, I spent a lot of my years as a kid growing up in battle scene. That's why my name, DJ Lethal Skills, that was my battle name as a battler, you know? Uh, but then it evolved for me battling after years of doing that to start doing workshops and community. There is one aspect I would like to highlight that is not being mentioned in hip-hop. A lot of people think hip-hop is all about and girls and cars <laughs> and bling and like living a lavish life and whatnot. Actually, hip-hop is about empowering your people. It's about a voice for the voiceless. Hip-hop, that's what is hip-hop. Uh, this is the core of hip hop. Everything else you see that says hip hop and it's not related to that, it's more for entertainment. It's not truly hip hop. But if you're doing something that is reflecting your reality, is real to you, this is something real that you are, this is hip hop. It might not relate to other people, but if you're true to yourself and your art about what you're doing, this is hip hop. But mainly hip hop is about a voice for the voiceless and empowering the community, which bring me as a DJ. When I started growing up and maturing up, I'm like, how can I use my DJing to empower communities? So as I have started being heavily involved in the scene and building connections and getting my credibility and building my name, uh, connecting with the big brands, Serato DJ, Pioneer Middle East, uh, all these battles and whatnot that happened, uh, I started using what I learned in my life because when I, when I was a kid growing up, I had no one around me to teach me. There was no internet. So learning was very hard to access. Literally, I learned, I know I'm jumping back and forth, but this is cool of the, just to share the experience. The way I learned scratching, I had no one ever taught me, this is how you scratch skills. You put your hand on the record, you pitch, the pitch you, you touch the mixer, you open, then you move this forward, then you close it, then you open again, you move this forward. No one ever told me anything. The way I learned how to scratch, I used to get uh, from the States a VHS cassette of the DMC battles that used to happen in America. Okay. DJ battles, it's very famous. It started from the late 80s. Uh, yeah. mid 80s late 80s actually onwards that has like you know cash money and all these like legends like you know my father used to have because he used to work in the dubbing business he used to have one a vhs player that has a slow motion mode so you press the slow-mo and then everything okay. slowly so i used to watch the dj on the slow-mo and then while i have one turntable at that time uh i didn't even have a mixer yet i was getting my pieces one by one and i used to just imitate the motion and hearing in my head, trying to imagine how it would sound with what he is doing. So this is my process. My process was always to slow things down, look at the process, capture it, slow it down, and break it in pieces. 
and then go through it piece by piece and then try to put it together and then learn it, master it. Then once you master it, add your own thing to it. How can I change it? How can I make it mine? What can I change in these steps that will make it different a little bit and I have my touch to when it comes to me doing this stuff, you know? So really it's like, it's like when you want to learn drums or guitar, you can get a guitar, learn one riff or one melody that you know, and you can go rock it anywhere on any beat. And people say, oh shit, man, you're dope guitars. But real yeah. guitarists will look at you and know, dude, this is like ABC. You, there's A to Z <laughs> that you still need to learn, you know? So yeah, yeah. even scratching art form is not very well represented nowadays because it fused a lot with nightlife and partying. So you see it as a passive thing, you know? And again, okay. I'm not hating you know time changes and music changes and art changes but now it moved more towards battle so the only living battles you have now is uh, dmc battle which moved online it's still there it's international battle djs mm -hmm. can submit every year like a five minute demo and if it gets approved then you can compete with the world champion and if you win you go to the finals they fly you somewhere and you win money and gear and sponsorship and massive exposure this is for real real scratch djs dmc battle for the more commercial uh, DJ battle, you have the three star, which is the Red Bull three star, which is fusing the party rocker, which is okay. the club DJ, how you rock the crowd with the scratch DJ, with the beat the drumming, those sit and play with their fingers and drum drum. So it brings all these elements and they have to go compete in a three star and where they need to fuse three different genres of music creatively, create a journey, share it with the crowd. And there's different elements where you get uh, scoring on it. So this is where you see scratching nowadays. You don't hear it much in the music unless you listen to my music and yes. people who do boom bap hip hop. I actually, I have a track coming up in August with the guy from the States, Joshua David. It's called, uh, I'm not gonna expose it, but there's some dope work that I've done on it and this will showcase. I'm always trying to keep the art form alive and what I do because personally, I love scratching. It's just the mean for me to express. And I feel when I scratch on a hip hop track, it complements the song. Let's say I'm doing a song that talks about uh, how amazing is Malaysia, all right? Okay. And then the rapper is rapping about the first verse, Malaysia, the Nasi Lamar, the Sambal, the cultures, the temple, <laughs> the, the shrine, the mosque, the church, the diversity, the unity, all is good. The Najib, the six million, no, I'm not going to go political, you know? <laughs> and, then, and then when it comes to the hook, then I choose from the rapper stuff that he mentioned about Malaysia and I cut it in a different way where I built sentences going back and forth, emphasizing on the message or in the mood or on the thing. So scratching is beyond just taking a sound and going, you know, anyone can take yeah. a, anything and rub it back and forth and create noise. Yeah, because that's that's, that's my point exactly. Because uh, when it comes to scratching, I know this the technicality of it. When I did DJing, I didn't get into scratching because I knew that was too deep for me, too advanced for me. And uh, like just before I even met you, where the days, uh, the first time, I actually saw you before I knew you personally was from the track uh, with DJ Fuzz uh, from KL to Beirut. Okay, that one had some awesome scratching because when you come to talk talk about uh, uh, DJs in Malaysia who's known for their scratching, there's only a handful of them. Uh, sadly enough, uh, the late uh, DJ Nash was one of it. Then you had Uno, you had Fuzz, uh, then you had another few more guys. Uh, I can't really get their names in my head right now. There's only a handful of them, but way back in the 90s, you had people like Funkadelics, uh, DJ Can, DJ Maverick, and uh, also DJ Sunanda, and uh, the list goes on. But right now, it's getting less and less. Uh, it's more towards just the music without the scratching. But speaking of scratching, there are different types of scratching, right? There are there like different ones, or is it based on just individual styles? There is different levels of scratching, you know? And in order to unlock the very advanced scratches, you need to unlock the, the basic. So first, you need to unlock the foundations. Learn the baby scratch, the forward scratch, the transformer scratch, each one by itself on different speeds, on different uh, uh, ways. And then as you unlock these little pieces of the puzzle, then you can start combining them and then unlock bigger pieces of the puzzle. And the more you add, you master your skills on creating a sound, because it's sonics, it's it's audio. Uh, the more you become better at it, the more you become really, when you hear someone scratching, you might hear two DJs doing the same scratch, but one will hit you on the soul, and one you'll say like, can you please stop? Even though they're doing the same thing. It's like two guys holding the same okay. guitar, playing the same melody, but just one guy has something different than the other. You cannot explain it, they're both doing the same thing. It's okay. just like, this comes with time and, and, and experience. So there is different types of scratches. 
and there is different place uh, and time for what kind of scratch you can do. Like for example, when I used to be a resident in Zouk or Zion, and we have our, or even when we used to do the crypt show, the crypt show, for example, because it was an online radio and we have the freedom to do whatever, we used to break it down. We okay. used to sit and scratch for like 10, yeah, 20 minutes and go back and forth, with all the <laughs> measurements of soul, whatever, even Vandal used to cut. Maybe you sometimes you jumped and you cut, I don't even remember. But <laughs> play it on. But when you go to the club, you cannot go what you do in the DJ scratch battle. When you go to the scratch battle, it's literally focused on scratching. So you really need to go uh, samurai kitana slices clean, show diversity, show melodics, show uh, originality, how clean you are, uh, how you are engaging with the song that you are playing. Because, okay, let me give you an example. Let's say there's a music playing and you scratch. You're okay. You can tell the DJ is good. If when he is scratching, you don't realize he's scratching. Yeah, it doesn't break the song because, because some some cases I have heard DJs like you basically ruin the entire song. But your scratching is good, but you just it's not balanced with the song that's happening in the background. You right? need to add the song, yeah. And 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 there's a place in the song placement where you can scratch. Like for example, when you have a chorus singing, and then you come scratching on top of the singing, you are killing the hook in the club because people in the club wait for the chorus to sing it because that's what they know. Most of the people know the chorus of the song. When it comes, they sing it like you know. They're not gonna do the verse unless they're really into like the hip hop, and they go da 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 da. You know. Yeah. So when you come and kill, da, 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 going over the same tone, not being diverse, not adding to the song, you kill it. So you better not scratch. You better just play music. You know. So people in the club usually go to dance. So when you want to scratch in the club, for example, it's out of context. Maybe you can do it in transitions. You can loop a small part of the song and take. Or oh, maybe when nobody's. Back. No, no, you can Nobody's do it on, on the we, dance floor. No, bro. We used to do it on the dance floor. Like, uh, that's the song. Me and Nash, we DJ heavily in Zion and Zouk. Uh, we used to do it. Uh, I do it at big festivals. But there's a way how you do it. Once you okay. master it, you know when to come in and out. Clean, um, light, and melodic. And you're really adding to the vibe. And actually, people get excited if you're doing it right. Like, oh, shit. Like, look what he's doing. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, you start I'm looking at it. man. I always look forward for the day the DJ goes on scratching mode. It's not about the music. I couldn't give a damn whether I'm going to dance or I'm going to sing. But I always, I'm always fascinated when I see the DJs do that wiki wiki stuff on the turntables. It's 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 an art form itself, man. Yeah. It's it's different. It's it's amazing. But when it comes to styles of the, like you mentioned that you have different transitions that you have to unlock and so on. But these days, are the scratches synonymous with the identity of the DJs? Like say, for example. You do you have your own style of scratching in comparison uh, with somebody else, or is it just a standard template for everybody? There is the common standard template that everybody needs to learn. It's like when you want to speak English, you need to learn A B C A to Z. You yep. need to learn this, the apple, the table, the walk. You need to learn the basics of how you can express yourself. Once you learn the language, then you're free to express yourself the way you want. Obviously, some DJs throughout the history have created their own scratches that are followed. Like the chirp scratch is followed by DJ chirp. Right? The transformer was done by someone. Each one from these, uh, the baby scratch was done by a grandmaster, like a flash. Like everyone has created one of those basic ones. And as it advanced, uh, the, the, the art form, more advanced scratches started being developed and created. But eventually for you as an identity, how do you need to learn all of this and then you bring it in your own style. I, I don't know how to express this. It. like you learn guitar and then you can start uh, going solo on your own, creating your own uh, melody. You're not yeah. repeating anything that you heard before. You just someone is playing drums and you just go and you solo and it's your own stuff. You're just expressing what you're feeling or you're screaming and through the guitar or whatever. So this is scratching roughly how it is. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to express in words. If I yeah, had a cool, table, because, I would cut it up for you. Yeah, I know. I was just hoping for that, but unfortunately, we couldn't do that right now. But uh, I'm going to go sidetrack a little bit. I'll go back a little bit. Earlier, when you said about the style that you're mixing, uh, like you hear the words, you try to infuse that into your songs, into your scratches, and so on. Uh, recently, I think a couple of months back, you actually uh, was dropping some scratches for one of the uh, Tamil song locally, right? For the hip-hop oh, bands down here. Yeah, so how did yeah. you understand the whole thing? Is it was just the beats, or is this like okay. people gave you the uh, translation for the entire song? This track, actually, uh, I did it when I was in Lebanon. I was in my trip. I was in the Middle East with the uh, Red Bull and uh, El Prox and Orga, two of the good friends of mine, and I really respect them in the Tamil hip-hop scene, even in the hip-hop scene in Malaysia, actually. Super talented guys. 
uh, they had the song called Covey Bars, which is a poet, uh, poet bars, poet, you know. Uh, mainly, I'm so close to the boys that they literally broke down everything for me. Like, okay. what is the song about? This part, what it means? This, I'm like, you know, I need to understand what's the song, what are the parts. So literally, they told me what parts they want me to use and what it means. And then they're like, just do your thing. And then okay. once I understood, like, da -da 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 -da, this means this. Dun, 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 dun. This is what it means to me, but I know this means that. Because I started. I've been wanting to, because I've been wanting to ask you that for a very long time, and I keep forgetting because whenever I see you, it's like, how the hell did he understand the whole song before dropping the scratches, man? Now that you tell me that you it no, was translated, I, that makes more sense, man. You need to study it. You need to plan it. This is not a freestyle scratch. It was because uh, it's a track, so I had to spend some time building the, how I'm going to execute it. And then doing several experimentation until I executed the final one that it is what you hear on the track. Actually, check it out, guys. It's a dope track. Support your Malaysian local hip hop music, yeah. man. Or, I'm, gonna play, I'm gonna try to play it in the air. Uh, put the links in the uh, comment section in a bit from now. Uh, but also, speaking of our music, is like when you talk about dropping tracks without freestyling it, it's like. That's, that's another question of mine. Whenever DJs do scratches on tracks, is it like something planned or is this like you can just drop a freestyle? You hear a song that you can know, I just dropped my scratches for this track with somebody. Is it is it possible that way? This is or do, is can, that what they do? You can because when it comes to scratching, you can either scratch sounds, like take sounds, whistles or whatever and cut it, just add sounds. But when it comes to word cutting, you need to kind of like know what are you cutting, you know? So it needs some kind of a quick pre-planning, but some DJs just go freestyle and then take the best cut of their freestyle then they add it to the track or whatever. And some DJs, especially when it comes to boom bap and raw hip hop, DJs can sometimes just go and just cut raw, whatever comes up, and this is what you got on the track, you know? Like, uh... so there's no format, honestly. Art, scratching is an expression and you cannot limit expressions. It's just art and it's free and diverse. So diverse, you know? Yeah. That's nice, man. And uh, talking about tracks, uh, your own tracks, you've come up with a couple of with tracks recently. And uh, actually, it's, it's been going on for quite a while now. You had several singles being up. And uh, your latest one, if I'm not mistaken, is called Elevate, right? Yeah, actually, Elevate is coming out this Saturday on July 4th. Uh, this is a track featuring uh, King Rob. He's from the States. It's, uh, okay. And Vandal uh, on the second word. And this is a track that I've been looking super forward to release and share with everybody. It has a very good uh, vibe uh, and uh, it's very well needed such vibe in these times. So I'm looking forward to share it with you all. And uh, if you like the track, uh, let me know and just uh, support it. You know what to do. Put yeah, it down. I hate you. I hate you for one reason, man. Teaser. You know, if there's one thing I hate is teasers, <laughs> man. It's like, you know, you anticipate for something so badly and you make us wait for it. Uh, I think two days to go, I think I can be patient for that one. I can be patient yeah. for that track. Actually, I've, I've been releasing a lot of music. Actually, speaking of... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. You know, sorry, uh, you, uh, we were talking about your music. You have a couple of them going on, right? Could you just name us a few but that was released recently? Uh, I think last week Vandal was on and he mentioned OK Boomer. There was OK Boomer. There was uh, Tussic Warren. You know, I'm also like Vandal. I'm heavily involved with the crypto and blockchain world. So for the past, since 2017, I've been doing crypto and blockchain and projects and related music. But you don't see me posting it much on Facebook and my IG and whatnot because it's for communities within the blockchain and crypto world. So if you're not related or connected, it's not relevant to the people. So it's for a niche thing. But starting okay. last year, I started releasing Lo-Fi and uh, I have an album called Above the Clouds that I released in December 2019. Uh, and since then, I've been releasing a lot of collaborations. I'm always collaborating with people, either doing cuts or giving beats to people or, or selling beats. Uh, but now this year, especially after COVID-19, as I lost a lot of my uh, jobs, which is performing and doing community workshops, whether as a blockchain speaker or as a uh, community builder through hip hop, through turntablism, through uh, Red Bull freestyle or, or the things that I do, uh, I had to improvise and uh, it gave me the time to relook at myself and and it gave me the space to, I have no excuses anymore not to release music. I mean, I was stuck at home and there's nothing to do. So I took the time to elevate my art and go back dig deep and uh, rebrand myself. And now moving forward every month, you're going to be seeing new releases coming out from me actually. So I rebranded the whole Spotify, my whole uh, everything. 
So yeah, which is good, which is good. But uh, speaking of music, but just before that, a big shout out to a couple of messages down here before I forget. Uh, uh-huh. Natalie Cruz says salute to the homie DJ Lethal Skills. Shout Please, sends the loads of love. Please shuffle. Hugs. I think she must be somewhere around the house. Yeah. And of course, brother Zarif Afandi. Yo, hey, Hello, bro. Zarif, thanks for doing it, man. I don't have the uh, yeah, the man. Open and this, uh, yeah, actually, you can to... find it somewhere down there. But yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of music, I've noticed one thing about you. Uh, you're a purist when it comes to hip hop, right? Because the style of music that I've seen, uh, I've listened to from your side, it hasn't changed much. It has that pure hip hop vibe in it. It doesn't go too much of the, too much of the trap side or any other the latest new age style. Are you maintaining it that way, or is this that this is phase one and more coming up? Which one um, is it, man? To be honest, I came to learn by being blessed to do music for that long. The every subgenre or every evolution of music, whatever it is, with time, there's good music and bad music. You know. I am doing now trappy and drill and whatnot, which is going to come out soon, and wavy music and whatnot. But it's still always in concept, it, uh, context. It's always have a message. It's always for a cause. Uh, I do tend sometimes to work on projects, on music that's for fun. But it's just like okay. a paid project for me. It's not something like I would go and push it and put it everywhere. Uh, but, you know, I don't mind what genre it is. My heart is boom bap hip hop and classic hip hop. Uh, soulful hip hop. This is the school that I came from when it comes to hip hop. So it's always there. I can never run away from it. But I've been doing, as I mentioned earlier, like lo fi music and chill out, just feel good music. Uh, I was very angry when I started doing hip hop uh, back in the 90s. Uh, it was all political and hardcore hip hop. And uh, we were angry, man, you know, and you can hear it in our music. You can hear it in my beats. You can hear it in my cuts. And then I just started growing up and whatever and experiencing different things in life. Now I'm not angry. I'm chilling, man. <laughs> so my music is chilling. And my music reflects different stages of my life. So moving forward, you're going to be hearing some cool, trappy stuff, drill. But I promise you, it's never going to be um, meaningless. There's always a message. And there's always dope artists that I'm collaborating with and uh, and uh, releasing dope stuff. Actually, I did a track with Zarif. Uh, I did the cuts on uh, one of the tracks that Zarif just released a while back during the COVID-19. Uh, yeah. Maybe if you're still watching, you can you can uh, drop 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 uh, the link for it. Maybe you can, you can check it out. Yeah, we'll we'll share the links. I'm going to share every single track that I can think of that has uh, you, that you ha- you have released or rather work with because there's a long list of it actually. And uh, one thing I always enjoyed about your music is the uh, pure the pure concept of hip hop is still there, no changes, and uh, not the usual stuff that you usually hear on mainstream radios, which I love it so much. And uh, any new collaborations, any new guys are coming up uh, in your project, upcoming projects? Uh, yes, actually, there's a lot of the people I'm working with in the pipeline. Uh, I can mention a few. Uh, the Saturday, we're dropping the track with uh, King Ra Vando. Uh, following that, I'm working with Anon Misery, another Canadian uh, OG in the scene since the 90s. Uh, uh, he's a dope, dope artist. I'm doing a lot of work with him. Uh, there's a track that's going to be released in August with the guy who's called Dope Guy called Joshua David. He's uh, from St. Louis. I just released on my IG uh, one of the freestyles he did on uh, one of my beats a while back. He just released it. If you guys want to check it out, he's a dope artist. And this video, this is going to have a video for production and the whole shebang. Um, there's some people in Belgium I'm working with. There's some people from the Middle East I'm working with. There's uh, more collaborations with Tamil hip hop in Malaysia than I'm doing, and some Malay hip hop nice. with Sarawak that I'm working on uh, with Loon Chi. We're working on a track also. I mean, I have a lot of music to come. Um, I'm committed now because I have no access to gigs and whatnot, so I have to just do music. No excuse. Actually, this, you can always look at the bright side. When something doesn't work out, the other one, it opens up another the doors to something else altogether. Like, for example, like I said, even this particular show, everyone is complaining that, hey, it's COVID, you can't do this, you can't do that. But then again, it created opportunities or rather pushed you further to do things that you've been putting things on a hold for a while, right? True, true. There is opportunities. It's not easy, but there is opportunities out there. Like, seriously, if people want to, like, really figure out, now with the online, you can learn online, man. Like, uh, I just got into Fiverr a while back, like Fiverr, dot, I don't know what's the website, Fiverr. If you have any kind of talent, you can just offer services on Fiverr and get paid. Uh, there's so many means you can make money online. You can learn about crypto, you can learn about blockchain. There's so many tools where you can go blog uh, and get paid in uh, crypto. Uh, learn about uh, how the future is changing, what kind of technology is coming, 
we're moving towards cashless society, cryptocurrencies, uh, decentralized autonomous uh, applications and organizations and the way uh, the world is going to be working. So the more you are curious to see how the future is going to be and you set yourself up from now in a nice seat to be involved in the early stages of this technology and innovations, uh, you're a winner, you know? But there are so many opportunities out there. I highly advise you to follow Vando. Uh, if you're a musician, check out DAO Records, what we do, our part of DAO Records with Vando. Uh, they, we're doing so many cool things for art and musicians and artists who do art as uh, drawing and painting and whatnot and uh you know just check out what we're doing and uh if you guys have any questions you want to see you know i can mention a few things there's hive steam it apex apex is like instagram where you post pictures and you get uh, upvoted and you're in crypto uh you can go on youtube you can go online and learn about what is crypto and, uh, you know yeah, that's, if you that's, love that's and that particular topic i might need at least about six hours of this particular year because the last time i spoke to vandal it took us hours to just elaborate touch on the surface of crypto and crypto is something that one of these days we're going to have a chat once again when you have the time because i believe that you are pretty tied up with something for tonight there since somebody's leaving tomorrow so i'm not going to take much of your time but anyway all right just anyway before we wrap things up uh just to highlight or uh, rather to divert people to your music uh, you're on Spotify, right? You just have to look for Correct. DJ Little Skills and spelled as spelled as S-K-I-L-L-Z. Okay, look Correct. for that. I can That's also, uh, you have some of the videos on uh, YouTube. I'll try to share everything on this particular page in a bit from now. Okay, you got a new music videos, uh, a couple of music videos over there, or rather lyric videos. Okay, that's available there. You can follow you on Instagram, DJ Little Skills. Am I right? Correct with the Z. It's all DJ Diesel skills everywhere. But one main site where I post a lot of my stuff that you cannot find it ever anywhere else, it's on Emanate. Emanate.live slash DJ Diesel skills. And this is where Emanate is like a Spotify on steroids using blockchain technology. Maybe we'll do another episode on that. I would like to share it with the community because this is a place that can help a lot of musicians who are struggling to earn money from their music. Uh, this is a place where you can upload your music. And as it gets streamed, you get paid in real time every six seconds in micropayments. Uh, and uh, you don't need to learn about cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or blockchain to cash out. There's so many means for you to pull your money out. But it's a very long topic and I would like to give it its uh, righteous time. Maybe at some point later in the near future, I, you can host me again and I can, you know, dedicate a segment to share with people how they can make money out of them. Another, you know, uh, side income through their music because there is opportunities cool. out there. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully soon, because uh, I'm also trying to get meet people in uh, person to actually have this show going on. Currently, having on screen to screen, it's it still feels a little weird, man. It's been about what twelve episodes, thirteen episodes, and it feels weird wow. talking to people on the other side of the screen. Uh, I might be a bit old school, like even video calls. I'm not much into it, but uh, then again. <laughs> But thanks to technology, we managed to connect, man. It's been a totally. while. It's good to see you again. Skills, once again, thank you so, Likewise. so, so much for coming on board of my, uh, something like that with Nav. And uh, remember, guys, if you missed this particular broadcast, uh, you can check it out on Facebook. It's available on Facebook. It will be on Spotify. Maybe you're listening to it on Spotify right now. Please feel free to drop us a message. If you have any messages for Sleasel Skills, maybe you can pass it to him later on. And follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Spotify, Eminet slash live. Uh, sorry, Eminet live slash DJ Lethal Skills. Okay, you can follow that also on uh, Instagram I mentioned earlier. So there you have it. Every single thing. Best of luck in your news track that's coming out this Saturday. Don't forget to share it. And uh, make sure you just pass me the link here. All right. Thank you take care, man. It was great chatting with you, dude. Everybody stay humble. Thank you for checking out the show and supporting up. Peace. Thank you.